Hi, this is Mike Schnecker, Business Development Manager at Ronin Schwartz, and I want to show you the new RTO, give you a quick overview of the user interface, and some of the performance, and also introduce the new MSO option for this scope. Uh, right now we're looking at the RTO, I have no connections to the signals right now, and um, I'm looking at the waveform with no signal applied. Um, I'm going to zoom in on the uh, waveform set to uh, 1 millivolt per division, so now we're looking at the 1 millivolt per division scale. Um, I want to set up the front end now so that it's 50 ohms loading, so I'm going to go into the menu and uh, first thing you'll notice is the menus on the RTO are uh, very graphical in nature, uh, so they not only show where the settings are applied, but actually in the signal chain where each one of the controls affects the, uh, the waveform. Over here we want to adjust the input coupling, so I'm going to switch to DC 50 ohms and I'm going to ground that input so that now I have the instrument connected to ground. Let's go ahead and look at the waveform here. We see the noise level. This is one millivolt per division. Now, on most scopes, that's uh, not a gain stage, but rather is a zoom feature. In this scope, it's actually a gain stage. I'm going to do a quick measurement of the noise by selecting our measure tool on the toolbar and touch the menu, and you can see the amplitude. And um, we're going to switch that measurement from amplitude to standard deviation. So select standard deviation or AC RMS. You can see it's about 140 microvolts RMS, and that's the baseline noise of the instrument, which is extremely low. Right now, it's about half the noise you'd see in most uh, digital scopes in this class. Uh, we can take a quick look at the FFT by touching the FFT tool, do the FFT of that waveform. Now, the FFT is shown in the graph below, and the graphics on the screens can be controlled by touching on this toolbar over here and sliding the diagram to wherever you want it and then dropping it so you can split the screen in multiple different ways, top, bottom or um, side to side. Um, we're going to adjust the FFT resolution using the FFT resolution bandwidth control um, so that we have some more uh, fine detail and frequency and I'll do a little averaging on that. So now we're looking at the spectrum down here in the bottom. And that spectrum goes from 0 Hz to 2 GHz and uh, you'll notice there's no spurious on that and that's a very key feature of this scope. We use a non-interleave ADC. It's a single core 10 GHz per second ADC which provides a uh, very clean uh, frequency domain uh, picture, which is because there's no spurious caused by interleaving. In addition to low spurious in the frequency domain, it also helps lower the noise in the time domain. So we are able to achieve better than seven effective bits out of eight from our AEC, which is, again, uh, the best in the industry. I'm going to turn off that FFT, and uh, we're going to um, uh, show better feature of the scope and that is the digital trigger. So most trigger circuits in scopes, all trigger circuits in scopes, are actually a separate analog circuit that's split off of the main input. In the Ronin Schwartz RTO, we use a digital trigger which takes the digitized waveform from the ADC and applies the trigger to that digitized waveform. One of the benefits of that is that you have uh, virtually no trigger jitter. And a quick way to show this is to, um, is to put a signal in and we'll uh, connect the probe to the front end, and uh, we'll connect this probe um, to one of the signals on this board here, and, and then we'll adjust the uh, vertical scale, get the signal on screen, adjust my time domain so we can get a nice display here, and as I adjust my trigger level, you'll notice that there's this blue band on the screen. That blue band there is a trigger history, and that's done in the digital trigger to allow you to trigger on noisy edges of waveforms. The signal, when it enters into the hysteresis band from bottom, in this case, the rising edge trigger, when it enters into the hysteresis band, trigger will not occur until the signal exits that hysteresis band. So if it's actually got noise on it, we can reject that noise. And I'm going to zoom in in time here, right around that edge, and I'm going to adjust my vertical scale so I can get this signal on screen. And uh, what I'm going to do is um, show what the trigger jitter looks like. And you can see this is the signal at uh, 5 nanoseconds per division display. And uh, let me just uh, do a quick histogram of that crossing point. So I'm going to select my histogram tool, draw a histogram box, and adjust that to a very narrow voltage range. right at the trigger point. Measure the standard deviation of this guy. So we're going to take our measure tool, hit the standard deviation of that histogram, and you can see it's very small. In this case it's about 
116 picoseconds RMS. Uh, the reason for that very low trigger jitter, again, is because the digital trigger, and in fact, that jitter that you're viewing is, is really the residual noise in the front end of the scope operating through the slope of that signal and not actually the trigger jitter at all. So there's really zero trigger jitter contributed here. So let me turn off that histogram and the measurement, and we'll go back to full screen display. And now I'm showing this, this voltage ramp again. And uh, one of the new features of our oscilloscope is this uh, MSO option, which I have one of the pods connected here. The MSO features 16 digital channels that run up to 400 uh, megabits per second uh, rate. We capture the data and oversampling at a 5 gigasample per second rate. So this enables us to find uh, narrow pulses of 200 picoseconds uh, with, um, with this logic channel while still being able to capture up to 200 million waveform samples. I'm going to turn on the display of this uh, by going into our protocol menu, selecting a serial bus. I'm going to turn on the first four channels of that logic pod, D0 through D3. I'm going to set the technology to a 3.3 volt CMOS. And um, the, we can actually uh, handle a number of different logic families or custom levels. And the thresholds can be set individually in groups of four independent groups of four channels each um, on the logic pod. So now we're looking at the logic channels mixed in with the analog channel and again with my um, smart grid I can minimize the logic display and position it again anywhere I like either below or above and we're looking at um, the bus form diagram above here and the individual bits below you can see the counts as we're doing the different bits and right now we're triggering on the edge of that ramp but we can change our trigger input with the MSO to trigger off any one of the digital channels. So if we channel, trigger off a channel D3, which is our most significant bit of the counter, we're now triggering off of the counter MSB. And um, when we zoom out, you can see the benefit in the lower display of the oversampling, and that is we have very high time resolution, so we can actually see the skew between the most significant bit and the least significant bits. And in this case, it actually results in a spurious count of zero in between seven and eight that occurs for a very short period of time. The duration of that count is roughly five nanoseconds. If you look at the scale, you'll notice it's 20 nanoseconds per division. So with this oversampling, we're, we're able to capture very narrow transitions in between uh, the bits to capture uh, spurious glitches that might cause a circuit to malfunction. In addition to the oversampling in the deep memory, the instrument also features very high update rate in the MSO mode. The MSO mode will update at 200,000 waveforms per second. I'm going to show you that by displaying our performance parameters. I'm going to turn on our performance measurement, and here we can see the readout as, as waveforms per second. Right now it's very slow because we're triggering off of the most significant bit, which is the slowest of all the bits in this particular pattern. I'm going to change the trigger to the least significant bit, which is the one that toggles the fastest, and I'm going to adjust my time scale in so we can actually see right on that least significant bit. So now we're triggering on the least significant bit with a 1,000 point record across the screen. And you can see the update rate is about 195,000 waveforms per second. And that's for all 16 logic channels being uh, sampled at the same time as all four analog channels being sampled. Um, as we increase the record length beyond 1K, let's go to a longer record length, like let's say in this case 200,000 samples. And you can see the update rate is still over 1,100 waveforms per second, and that's for a 200,000 sample uh, waveform display, which is again unheard of in this sort of a technology. One of the reasons we can get this update rate is the MSO is built on an entirely independent circuit based on an FPGA, which contains all of the acquisition, triggering, storage, and processing features of the MSO in one module and it doesn't share any resources with the oscilloscope so we can maintain update rate uh, with both logic channels and real-time channels operating at the same time. Let's go back to the uh, D3 display. We'll leave you with a nice logic display on the scope. So there you have it, very quick overview of the uh, Rodin Schwartz RTO with its new MSO module.